Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how we can generate completely novel datasets with GPT-3. So we are going to see how we can generate completely new paraphrase pairs using GPT-3. So I have created this prompt. The following is an original sentence followed by a paraphrased version of it with a diverse choice of words. And I just took uh, three examples. Once a group of frogs was roaming, a herd of frogs was wandering around the woods and uh, symptoms of influenza, uh, signs of signs you may have flu. So I've taken three different uh, sentences and their corresponding paraphrase pairs. And I've created a prompt like this, original colon sentence and paraphrase colon sentence then a hash 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 followed by that. Now what happens is that when you have this format, GPT-3 is supposed to generate, once you give original colon, it is supposed to generate a sentence, then again generate paraphrase colon and generate a paraphrased version of it and then generate hash hash hash. So we have stop sequence as triple hash as you can see and this is since this is a paraphraser i've kept temperature as 0.85 so uh, keeping some diversity so it's more dialed towards high diversity or creativity and in order for it to not repeat the same words or talk slightly about new topics or words i introduce some frequency penalty and presence penalty as you can see here and i'm using the highest model text davinci 002 but nevertheless, let's just run and see if it actually generates original sentence and paraphrase sentence. Although the novel has been banned, many people have read it. Many people have read the no novel even though it has been banned. Great paraphrase. Let's rerun it again. George Washington was the first US president. George Washington was the inaugural United States president. Great. As you can see, there is nothing about George Washington or US president in any of the examples that we gave above. But GPT-3 is so good that it can generate a sentence and its corresponding paraphrase completely out of the blue. Amazing. And uh, what we are going to do next is actually convert this into code and we'll create a simple UI where you can continuously generate sentences and their corresponding paraphrased versions. And if the generations are good, you can save it into a data frame. So create a CSV file. So you can just keep running and append high quality paraphrase pairs to the data frame that is the CSV file. So you can just generate novel data sets out of the blue completely. We are just going to see that. Let's get to the coding part of this section. And uh, I've opened the Google Colab notebook in our module paraphrase data set creation. First, let's go ahead and grab OpenAI GPT-3's key. So you can click on uh, view API keys. There are some API keys. I'm not going to reveal them, but I'm just going to copy one. And uh, once I come back to the notebook, I have this get pass where you can enter API key. Let's run this. So in order to securely enter our API, API key, I've created this. So you can enter your copied API key here. Amazing. Let's install OpenAI library. So I'm just doing that here. Once we are done with the installation, let's see how we can get this code from the playground itself. So once you go to this playground, whatever prompt the text that you try with, as well as the parameters that you have on the right, you can export everything as code easily. Just click on view code and copy this part. You have various options, Python, Node.js, curl, JSON. 
so go to python and just copy this code completely and bring it here instead of os.get environment i am just giving it the gpt3 api key that we that we captured so you can just give that and the rest of the response is exactly as it is now the beauty is that you can just run this and see what the output is so let's print response as you can see this is the response where the actual text is embedded here the cashier counted the money in the register paraphrase the cashier tallied the money in the register um, and uh, why do you have an array as choices because if you give best of as any value like 3 or 5 etc you would get all of those in here as an array but here we are just running with best of one that is basically you can give n or best of as uh, any high number here but since it's defaulted to one it's not shown here but nevertheless we printed the response and from the response we need to collect this text so response choices and the zeroth index because we are only running one and the text let's print that even so you can see the cashier counted and paraphrase now in order to actually get the original sentence and the paraphrase sentence all you need to do is split on paraphrase colon so that's what i am doing here just splitting this output on paraphrase colon and what happens is that once you split on here you get the initial part here as original and the later part here as a paraphrase i'm just using strip so that if there is any trailing uh, or initial space that's removed now let's print the actual original and paraphrase so you can see the cashier counted the money in the register the cashier tallied the money in the register so you have original and paraphrase version of this now what we need to do is just keep everything in a single function so whatever response that you saw above nothing new just the same thing that we saw above and the post processing that we did which is to actually get original and paraphrase by splitting on paraphrase etc let's just put that into a function because you can just call this function get paraphrase pairs so let's just call this function get paraphrase pairs and we finally get original and paraphrase sentences here let's run this i will never forget the day my cat ran away i will always remember the day my cat ran away not bad let's rerun it again after the game the coach gave a speech the coach addressed his victorious team after the game amazing paraphrase with lot of changed words so all we need to do is just keep running this and if there are good paraphrases just append this into a data frame where this is the first column and this is the second column so you can create a csv file with let's say 1000 paraphrase pairs or you know 2000 paraphrase pairs by just running like this and appending and finally you can use that to train any you know text to text transformer model etc for paraphrases that's about it so you can completely generate novel data sets with this and we will see how we can create ui for this even so for this i am using gradio gradio is a simple tool to create user interfaces you can assume it's much simpler version of streamlit we have seen streamlit already and you can assume gradio is even miniature version of it where you can create the ui with text boxes input boxes just in the collab notebook itself click on this link introduction to gradio blocks and what we are doing here is apart from the regular gradio app and its functionalities we are going to use some advanced features of gradio called gradio blocks especially that lets us design 
more functionality with input boxes and save text box etc you will see that in a bit but nevertheless we are uh, using radio blocks and let's connect our google drive personal google drive why are we doing this is because we want to finally store the data frame in our google drive itself the final data frame where all the paraphrases are appended awesome once we connect the google drive let's go on to the next section the section is actually pretty simple what we are doing is we are creating a paraphrase file called as paraphrases.csv in the path uh, where we have everything so in this path my drive practical introduction to nlp course module 4 and if that file is not present what we are going to do is initialize a data frame with just two columns original and paraphrase and we are going to save that empty data frame with these columns in the same path so let's just run this and it will be clear for us if you go back to your module 4 folder and refresh you will see that there is an uh, empty paraphrases.csv that is created so you can see that it's just empty with just two columns original and paraphrase and the beauty is that if it's already created we are not going to override because if you are generating thousand paraphrases you want to revisit again in a week or two weeks or tomorrow or later and come back and rerun this continuously so you want to keep appending to the existing csv file itself now this function is the same function that we have created above nothing new i just kept it since we are doing it with gradio and i wanted this uh, create ui to save paraphrases independent of everything else that's why i just kept the function here but the real beauty is that everything that we need to save paraphrases continuously run and save everything is just in this simple code that you can see on the screen right here so what we are doing here is we are creating our gradio blocks so in order to understand what we are doing here let's just run this and it will be very evident for you so once you run this you will get this ui where there is generate paraphrases so click on generate paraphrases the novel's protagonist is a young girl. The star of the book is an adult and going, going through uh, puberty. Great paraphrase. So we are just going to add it. Click on save. It's saved. Then click on generate paraphrases again. To make a perfect omelet, uh, you need to have the right ingredients. The key to making a great omelet is using the right ingredients. For example, if you don't want to use it, just skip this and just click on generate paraphrases again. A plus grades were achieved by studying for many hours each night to get you had to study for uh, probably not great click on generate paraphrases again the novel has been classified as coming of age story the book has been deemed as coming of age story fair enough let's add this click on save generate paraphrases again mount everest summit was first reached by in 1953 in 1953 where the first to conquer Mount Everest. Great. Just click on save. And the beauty is that you can close this. And what happens is that if you go back to your module for paraphrases.csv, the beauty is that all those things that you saved have come in here. Let's open this as Google Sheets. Let's expand these columns. awesome you can see automatically whatever we saved here it got appended and we are just creating new rows continuously and uh, you can come back anytime tomorrow or later and just keep running 100 more and uh, automatically it's saved in the file and you can come back later again and run maybe 200 more so it just keeps appending the paraphrases and they are almost 
as good as human curated or created and remember that your csv file is usually not synced with this google sheets file so every time you want to see what's the newest one just open the csv file again and start your google sheets from there instead of just opening the existing google sheet paraphrases.csv is the most updated one that you need to see and let's go back to the code and see how we are doing this magically first of all we are just importing gradio and pandas and we have our paraphrase path file and this is where the main code is with gradio.blocks as demo we are creating a text box and that that exactly is this text box and we are just creating two buttons generate paraphrases and save and as soon as you click button one which is tied to get paraphrases the input text box content is passed in here and the output whatever is returned is showed in the same text box so you can give input and output to the to be the same text box that's what we are doing here but here we are doing nothing with the input text box content in the first button click it's just passed but we are not using this text at all but what's happening as soon as you click this get paraphrases button is simply we are calling this function get paraphrase pairs that we created already here that is going to return original and paraphrase sentences we are just going to append original and paraphrase sentences with two backslash ends so just new lines and we are going to return that as text and the same text is displayed in the same text box so as soon as you click generate paraphrases that text that we get with original appended with two backslash ends the same text is displayed in the same text box that's exactly what's happening every time you click get paraphrases it's going to run this get paraphrases function again and it will generate new paraphrases completely new paraphrases but what happens is whenever you want to save any of the paraphrase if you think it is good you click on the save button and as soon as you click on save button we call this save to data frame function where whatever content is in the text box that's passed as input that is passed here to save data frame since we already know that we have content where original two backslash ends and paraphrased is available we are just going to get the same thing split the text with two backslash ends and we get original and paraphrased and we are just going to create a row with original and paraphrased as a list and what we are going to do is just open this csv file in here data frame is equal to pandas dot read csv and we are going to get the length of the current data frame and just append it at the location that is the last location the new row that we get so every time we are going to read this file and get the last row and in the last row index we are going to append the current current paraphrase text that is there that's exactly what we are doing and once we do that we are going to write it onto the google drive immediately because we don't want to lose it we are opening the csv file we are writing a new row and we are saving the data frame directly onto the file that is onto the paraphrases.csv immediately so and we are going to return saved so what happens is that as soon as you click on save we are showing it is saved so this button click the output is also the same text box since we are returning saved we are showing that here so beautifully as soon as you click save the confirmation is also shown to you then again you can go and click generate paraphrases if you are happy you can click on save generate paraphrases and you can just keep moving and you can 
and you can come back at any later point of time and just look at all the paraphrases that we generated you might have even 100 or 1000 etc and you can train any new paraphrasing model text to text transform model or even fine tune gpt3 with this information now the beauty is that if you don't want to save this on every paraphrase you can just do some local storage and you can write for every 10 paraphrases that get filled in you can write to the data frame or the other thing that you can do is instead of using data frames you can just use sqlite sqlite simply just like data frame dot csv it is going to create a db data database file and the same way you initialized your data frame here you can initialize a sql local storage file with the database schema and instead of just opening the file and writing that to the file you can just do sql commit to write a new row to it even so you can use sqlite if you want for local storage of databases that is lightweight but that's about it as you can see beautifully we have created a novel data set creator and you have we have created an ui event to be able to beautifully keep running generate paraphrases and append the paraphrases to the csv file every time we run and this is not just limited to paraphrases you can do anything like translation or you can design prompts to do anything that you can think of it could be even summarization task etc and you can create uh, novel data sets like this i hope you enjoyed this session thanks for watching